Hi there and welcome back to Google Guru. Um, today I just want to take you on a quick tour of the Google Apps control panel which is where um, if you're not familiar a Google Apps administrator will make changes to their domain um, such as provisioning new users, um, setting you know certain preferences for the entire domain, uh, looking at reports and all that good stuff. So I'll take you on a quick tour here. Uh, we're on the dashboard right now so you can see an overview of how many accounts I'm using, whether or not I've reached my limit, and then a little bit of my activity information, as well as the core Google services that I have uh, enabled. And then you can see all my marketplace services down here. So the dashboard is just a quick overview. You can't really do too much from the dashboard. It's just a way to click into other things. So the organization and users tab, um, this is where you're going to go to create a new user, also to manage membership between org units and your org unit tree. You can see um, gurudevideos.com is my domain. I have a lot of different org units. And then under marketing, I have a sub org unit to that called New York. You can also manage which services are turned on and off for your domain here. So you have your core Google services, marketplace services, and then additional services, which uh, you can turn all of these on and off for each individual org unit. So say I wanted to go to interns, and we want to turn off Google Plus for interns. So we go down to Google Plus, and you, see, you can see it's inherited from uh, the parent org unit, which is the domain gurudevideos.com, and I want to turn it off. Save the change. There you go. That's one of the major things you would do in organization and users. Other than that, you can edit you know, information for a particular user. You can change someone's password, reset their sign-in cookies, add nicknames, edit group membership, you know, anything that's related to a particular user, this is the best place to do it from. Roles and privileges, um, you know, there's two major roles that you can look at, end user and super administrator, but say you wanted to have members of your help desk be able to reset passwords for your users. Well, you can give that particular ability and only that particular ability to a given user. So that's what I've done um, for this particular user is given him the ability to reset passwords. And that's a role, then you can go back and assign that to more users. So those are the basic things you do in the org and users tab. Um, groups, this is probably honestly the least useful tab in the control panel. Um, you can just view all your groups here and then if you want to really do anything you have to view it in the group service which you can click through too. There you go. Go to domain settings now. A lot of important stuff in here. The name of your organization, uh, the primary contact, your time zone, if you want to enable SSL, which I suggest doing just for security. Obviously, we want to hide all ads. I don't know why that's even an option when we're paying for the service, but um, you can select which release track you want to be on. So, rapid release means that your users will automatically receive new features as Google releases them, but scheduled release means that um, your, user, your users will receive new features typically one to two weeks after the rapid release, but it's still going to come out you know, without you really having too much control over when it comes out. It's just going to be delayed by a little bit. You can select uh, how you want to roll out new services to your users. So, you know, periodically Google will launch new services in the Google Apps bundle, so if you want to control the uh, provisioning of these services to your users manually, you, you'd want to select manual, but you know we like to get everything as it comes in. Then finally you can set what type of control panel features you want to view, so next generation and current release just depends on what you like. And then there's uh, communication preferences as well. You got your subscriptions and billing, domain names where you can add um, aliases and subdomains, user settings, one important thing to note, if you're going to use marketplace applications, almost all of them require that the provisioning API be enabled, so this is where you go. Domain settings, then user settings. Then admin roles, that's where you can create uh, particular roles, like this custom role I created for resetting passwords. And then your appearance, finally, which is where you will upload the logo that you want to use in your Google Apps account. Reports, um, this is where the audit log is, and then there's also some graphs that some pretty basic stuff, but you can see you know your total mail usage, your activity, login activity, 
all this good stuff, I suggest checking it out. Just, you know, it depends on that particular administrator, what they want to view, but there's some interesting information in here. Advanced tools, if you want to, you know, create multiple users, if you're in a large organization and you're going to have, you know, 100 people starting every week, then you'll probably want to be able to do this. Bulk upload a CSV to create a bunch of users. Here's where you can turn on two-step verification, which I highly recommend for additional security. That means that your users will have to have a second factor, uh, such as a mobile device, to be able to log in. You can also set up Google Analytics if you want to track activity on your domain. Um, there's a guideline to some of the core APIs here. That's pretty much it. If you want to restrict email delivery from a particular domain, you can do that. Uh, we've never done that. And then lastly, this is really useful when someone leaves the organization, you can transfer ownership of that person's documents from one user to another from within advanced tools. Setup, um, this is just the workflow that Google takes you through when you initially set up Google Apps. So it's basically just a checklist that links you out to other services. Support, um, this is all your good support resources from Google, online, phone support, email support, um, phone and email if you're paying only, I believe. And then finally, you got your settings for each individual service. So. Uh, for the calendar, for example, this is where you're going to set up resources, like if you have conference rooms or maybe video conferencing, you know, anything that can only be used by one person at a time. You got your email settings, you know, what's, what format do you want to use for first and last name. Um, you can see your MX records here. The list goes on and on, so I suggest looking into the settings and then services tab just to make sure you have everything configured. So that's about it. Um, I know that was a long one. I hope it was helpful. Um, and one important thing to note, you know, if you ever have trouble um, getting certain tasks done in the Google Apps Control Panel, panel there's a lot of great third-party tools in the Google Apps Marketplace that uh, take advantage of the Google Apps APIs to sort of surface different capabilities that aren't necessarily in the Control Panel. So make sure you check out the Google Apps Marketplace if you need some additional functionality in the control panel. Thanks.